everyone. We're back discussing policing in 2023 and the Force PRO is right here with us live in our Abuja studio. A few questions, AP, uh, ACP, before we open the phone lines and get some uh, reaction from the viewers. Uh, when you say Nigerians can take video and pictures of policemen on duty, are the policemen also aware of this? Yes, they are aware. Even they have their own liberty too, they are, they are liberty too to even video certain happenings in, in their various uh, points. So when you... If we, when you as we, are, we are projecting... Yes. We are you, projecting to have even body camera for them. Uh, IGP is considering how to approach the government to get body camera for them. There is no big deal about this issue. I've seen comments uh, of people. In fact, there was a lawyer that was attacking me for saying Nigerians uh, have the right to video or picture policemen. If it were to be a system, a, a community that is uh, CCTV controlled, are you going to have camera because policemen are in operations? No, there's nothing wrong about it. Do you know the number of people that video me today? When IGP has a function, as IGP, the whole IGP events, people will video and take his picture without his consent. Is it an offense? How many have you arrested? So it is not an issue that we should be taking and dragging it or, or as if it's a special thing. Nigerians can video me. If I'm doing the right thing, why would I say people should not video me? Why, we are, we are, when we have a point, our men at various points, when they video them, there are places where you can't video them, and I'm sure even you two will not need to video them. If you have serious operations that weren't firing, you can't be close to them to video them for goodness sake. But where they are doing their normal check, routine patrol, if you see police want to video police, fine. I'm not, I'm not against that. I have been on the field before as, a, as, a, as an operational man, as a patrol and guard officer. People have, been, people have been videoing people, and even as a PRO, if I'm doing a bad thing, am I going to tell Nigerians, please don't video me, I'm the first PRO? No. In other words, every policeman must be a good ambassador, you must be a good PR person, so that whatever you do can be videoed and recorded at any time. Whether we say it or not, Nifet, I, I, Nigerians know. Nigerians yeah. know that they can, they can video them and upload. So you don't even just say it, well, whether you like it or well, not. I, I, we I practice guess, this journalism I guess in Nigeria. When a, gun, when a gun wielding policeman, you know, out of anger, asks you to put down your phone, then common sense tells you what to do at that point. But let's open the phone lines. Reverend Dominic has called in from Alimosho. Good morning, Reverend. Compliments of the season to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good morning. And good morning to Police PRO. I want good to make morning. this comment. Yeah. Thank you. Can I go on? Go ahead, please. Please, uh, I, I hope he's listening to me. Yes, it There's is. this scenario that I witness every day on my way going to my house. When police stop me, maybe at night, I will open up my light. They will pass me quickly. But the same car I'm using, a young man, maybe 20 to 30, they will stop them. You know, what is the reason of passing me because maybe I'm above 50? And the crime of the young man that having a, young, a car, the same car driving, they stop them. And most of the time, they quarrel with these boys. What is the quarreling? Telling them to open their phones. I'm asking police here, does crime show in the face and age, and in the age and face? And what is the... Uh, the police act or police authority doing by policemen stopping young men on the road, forcing them to open their phone when they have not been committed any crime. And I try to see them fighting with them just to open their phones right on the road. I want to plead to police officers. Crime is not in age and the, in, in the face. Everybody can commit a crime. And again, for you to stop a man or a young boy to ask him to open his phone, I don't think it's, a, it's right anywhere. Please let him brief his men that... Time is not the age, and they don't have right to open young boys' phone on the road. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend, for the contribution. SCP, you want to react to that quickly? Yes, let me quickly react to that. You, you, you agree with us that for a very long time, we have been making statements, official statements, as regards the issue of checking on people's phone and profiling young Nigerians. It's not, it's not proper. It's not professional. The fact that I'm a young man, or I look young, or I have dreadlock on my head, or I use a ring as a man, that people will just jump to the conclusion that I'm a criminal. It is not proper, it's not ideal in any normal society. And uh, I'm sure you agree with me that even we dismiss a, a, a policeman in Lagos for checking somebody's phone. Go back, go back to record, you are going to see that. 
the, we, the police has dismissed somebody for that. So it is not a proper thing. It's not good. Profiling young people on the road is not proper. Checking people's phone is not proper. It's condemned. It's even out of, out of, out of it. If you want to check somebody's phone, that phone must have been subject of investigation, must have been marked an exhibit. That phone must have been marked exhibit or that laptop before you can have direct access to profile or to check such a phone or such a computer system. But to stand on the road, collect somebody's phone or laptop and be searching is unprofessional, is criminal, and we condemn it in totality. Yeah. So we have been telling Nigerians to report these cases to us. And people have been reporting cases to us. So I know, I'm sure, go through our platforms, our, our social media platforms. You can get some of these cases we have treated professionally. People have been dealt with. We don't condone it. We don't support it. I'm seeing this opportunity again to tell our men, stop profiling Nigerians. Every Nigerian has the right to dress the way he wants and dress the way he wants or go the way he wants to go. And stop checking people's phone. It is criminal because Absolutely. they are caught. They are going to face the full out of the law. Simple. Quickly, let's talk about the issue of one chance in Abuja. We've reported lots of sad stories um, in the course of the year. The FCT, you know, has the headquarters of most of the security forces and agencies in the country. How did it get that worse? One chance. I think the origin, the origin started from where you are there, Nifemi. That is Lagos. I think one chance started in Lagos and... Uh, spread uh, over to Abuja and some other places, but it's, 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 it's growing in Abuja for many reasons. Abuja is turning to Lagos because everybody wants to, to live in Abuja as well, the way they want to live in Lagos. Abuja is coming up, and more so now that the government is trying to upgrade the system in Abuja, uh, it is becoming a better place to stay. Uh, by and large, we are aware that we have some cases of one chance. And meanwhile, one chance is different from kidnapping. One chance is a process where you enter the vehicle and they don't even take you to anywhere. They finish all transactions in that vehicle within a ticket of an eye. And it's one chance. But I, I want to say this, that I don't want us to, uh, to blame law enforcement agencies much for this. We have told our people that every state has accredited and registered parks and garages. They have marked commercial vehicles that are basically designated for this uh, inter-city inter or intra-city movement of people. But the people these days, they, they just stay by the roadside, they look for uh, lifts, they look for free rides, and some of them that even want to pay. They don't care about these vehicles, whether it's a marked vehicle or not, whether it's boats or whatever and what have you. So in, in most cases, our people always take things for granted, and All it's right. not helping us in any way. For the case of one chance, you see a lady uh, flag down a vehicle, and when you stop this vehicle, you see almost five, six young, young men in the vehicle. Apparently, you are the only lady that want to join them. I get Why your point, ACP. Please again? hold that Absolutely. thought for a minute. Let's take um, Woodard's call from Joss. Good morning, Woodard. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead with your contribution, please. Yeah, my own is simple. And as regards the filming of police officers, my point is this. I've seen where a friend was attempting to, to recover a police officer, and the police officer collected the phone and smashed it on the ground. That's one. Secondly, please, side opening our boots and what have you, does the police officer have the right during checkpoints to ask us um, for our driver's license and particulars? Because this is what they do all the time. They don't even bother about opening your boot. They just ask you, bring your particular, bring your driver's license. So, where are we on that, please? Thank you, Wujat, for your contribution. ACP, let's talk about that quickly. I, yes, yes. The policeman has the right to ask you for whatever he wants to ask you for at a point. And as more the law of the land permits them to do stop and search, to do patrol, and carry out anti-crime uh, engagement or activities to call crimes and criminality in Nigeria. Checking for your papers is not out of point. They have the right to demand for anything. Uh, don't forget the police has the right to, to, to the police empower to apprehend all offenders. And we have all units. So it's not the job of the Federal Road Safety Corps alone or any state-owned traffic management agency that can demand for all these things. The police has the right to demand for your driver's license. 
they have the right to demand for your documents or whatever they want to demand for from you. Your I job as a well. yeah, citizen yeah. of this country mm -hmm. is to oblige, attend to them, be courteous, and respond to whatever question they ask you. The only thing is this, all this must be done and carried out the void of extortion or harassment or intimidation. That's why we say when a policeman at a point is becoming so tough for you and is going out of his bands, which will be able to demarcate it, enforcing the law and going out of your bands. By the time he's going out of his bands, he put cross across for us. Right. Our numbers are there. You know right. how to get. I'm not saying you engage that hand man in any hot argument or any physical combat. We have seen cases where somebody will love police man or uniform, despite the fact he's harmed. This is Saida, for goodness sake. No, I, Don't let I, us do this. I think that speaks more to common to sense, talk, ACP. Talk to us, take, and we can um, do that. Let's take Yakub's call from Dokwemo. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, if I mean. Good morning, sir. Please go ahead with the contribution. Yeah, uh, and then good morning to your guys. Uh, my, my, my question is simple. I just want to know this, or let's say I want to confirm. Uh, as last caller Raglan says, my own is that those citizens, uh, let me use my, myself as an example, I personally, if police officer, officers stop me on the road and try to start my car or check my boat and do some other thing, do I have right to take the picture or to take the video? Or do I, right, do I have right to take the video of a police officer that is doing job in my area? Because I have encountered that several, some time ago. They came to our area, but I found out that what the job that they are doing, uh, it is not all going well with me. And then I'm trying to video them. One of them approached me. Why do, I, why do you take my video? Why do you do that? I said, okay. We do respect. If you knew that you are doing the right thing, you are a police. I'm, I'm trying to be corrected, sir. I, I told him that I did. If you know that you are doing the right thing, I don't think that you'll be, you'll be afraid of me taking your picture or taking the video. Uh, so I, I think, I think you joined the conversation afraid. late, Yakubu. Uh, the ACP already mentioned that, that you really are in your right to take a picture or video of policemen at work. Am I right, ACP? Yes, you are, you are very right. Like I said, there's nothing wrong about it. I, for instance, I me mean, as a person, I stopped somebody for breaking traffic light one day uh, in Abuja here, even as the first PRO, for breaking that traffic light, I stopped and they started videoing me. In as much, there's no law that says I cannot stop you for violating a traffic offense. I'm not slapping you. I'm not abusing you. I am not beating you. Even I use his own video recording to defend my actions and charge him to court. So if a policeman is doing the right thing, I don't know the fears that we're going to not sure that, that you should not video me or record me. I use my own case as a case study in Abuja here, FCTA, just close to the Federal Ministry of Finance, of Ministry of Finance there, that they brought that traffic light. I parked, I brought the person. He didn't want to stop. I forcefully stopped the person. And behold, the, the lady in front of the vehicle started videoing me. I said, please go ahead. I even told, him my told her my name. My name it's is right. Nui Jobi. I'm so-so person. You're under, you're under arrest for doing this. I got the video. They even shared the video. I knew the video to nail them as a credible evidence to prosecute them. So All why right. the fears? I hear your so point I clearly, think the ACP. Policeman should not be afraid of videoing you when you are doing the right thing. I want you to answer this, you know, because of our time. What are you doing about the cases of kidnapping on the Lagos Ibado Expressway, particularly during this festive period? Well, well, well I know, I know that matter has been addressed before now, uh, and it is not rampant on that road again, except a particular case that is not even noticeable, whether it's kidnapping or not kidnapping, to the best of my knowledge. Because you know you have to assess every, every complaint reported. Uh, in most cases, when somebody says kidnapping, we need to get it right that is it actually kidnapping or what. Uh, only because if an expressway is being safe, you agree with me that when you play that road, you, you see some of our main policemen and the Amoteku team that have been positioned along that road. Or your state government has taken it serious. Uh, the same thing along Gibadon, Ijebu, Aziz, and some of the highways now, as we speak, we have done operation order to take charge or to take care of some of these uh, our highways along, across the country. Abuja, Abuja Kaduna Road 2 is taken care of. Even the Ogun State towards Benin, up to the, the south, south, south part of Nigeria, you are going to see them 
uh, along this road. So right. it's, it's, it's not rampant. And I can assure you that our deployment has, has been so fantastic to take care of all this. But our people should know, let us avoid night trips. When it is late, don't continue that journey. You can stay anywhere to have your night rest and continue your journey the following day. Are you to saying that very, very policing risky. doesn't take place at night, the ACP? It takes place at night. We have men at night, but police cannot be everywhere. And for you, for your own safety as a driver, what, those who are drivers who agree with me that it's better for you to drive during the day than to drive at night. Because I can see as far as 10 kilometers during the day, but it's not possible at night. I get your in point. In most cases, your headlamp would disappoint you. Okura so for us called in for from us Arochuku. normally to, be, to, to avoid night trips. Um, good morning, Mazi. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. Good morning. Yeah, please go ahead with your contribution. Uh, yes, what I want us to look at this issue now, you see, every Monday in the southeast, a part of south, uh, south, south, sit at home on Monday. So there is need for the federal government to draw the attention of the governors and honorable members from those areas, especially southeast. So let's say south, south, uh, eastern Nigeria, south, south, and southeast. That Monday is Christmas. We celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the whole world. Now, South East have been sitting at home. No movement on Monday. Hold on, Mazi. No, 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 are you yes. saying that the South East still observe the sit at home on Mondays? I'm telling you now. Ask anybody now. Part of the South East, they still observe it. Part of the South East, still observe it. So they should make sure that all the Eastern states, they should allow people to go out. Sure, that nonsense should stop. As far as I'm concerned, that sit at home is nonsense. Because... People are afraid to come out on Mondays, my brother. The federal government has to draw the attention of the governors, national assembly, because it is very, very disheartening that the whole world will be celebrating. The people will be afraid of coming out on Monday because on Monday, like in Arujuku, which is uh, a Christmas day, Christmas day in Arujuku, all the Catholic church in Arujuku, they do uh, uh, harvest and Thanksgiving. Now tell me, a teachers are aware by this issue of uh, nonsensical nonsense of it at home, they going on. How will it be? still afraid. So government should find the answer. And it's not what my brother said. I don't know what transporters used to do. It's very, very good. I'm, I'm very, very bad. So transporters will know that their motor is not good. They will come and refurbish some pa 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 and don't push the motor on the road. They will carry passengers from one a, a point A. You will not even reach halfway of the journey. The car will pack up or the bus, especially the buses. Indeed. There are part of people there. So, so many people normal space. Christmas right. on the road, which is not healthy. So the authority concern, whether police or, or road safety or with any, any agency that is also, to find out all what is happening. Because Thank you, Marzi, for your contribution. Uh, ACP, are you aware that sit at home still, still take, uh, takes place in um, some places in the southeast? Well, I, 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 I am not aware of that, but I know they say it, and I read it in the news the way people read in the news. I follow people on social media, I read. But let, let, let me say that matter goes beyond just mere discussion on this platform, Nifemi. Uh, I'm sure the others from the Southeast, it's only Southeast. I have not heard of anything from the South-South. And the issue of uh, secessionist agenda of separating and breaking Nigeria and the likes should not come up at this one in time in Nigeria. We have a formidable force to say we want a nation that is going to be our pride, our common heritage. And even the elders, our forefathers, will not support the issue of causing problems and causing problems all the time. I, we have been, most of our projects or programs we have done in the Southeast were done on the sun, on the Monday, and we, we have noticed that economic activities are always, are always on. But by and large, I don't want to dispute the fact that maybe in some areas the they want to observe. But the fact is, those, our leaders, our leaders in those places, All right. they should help us to know how to provide a solution in this problem. I don't know the rationale. The rationale behind the issue of, I'm angry with the federal government, I want a separate nation, and I'm killing my kinsmen. Mm. All those unknown government, are they actually unknown? They live in some places, they marry somewhere, they do parties, they do ceremonies, and we still keep on calling them unknown gunmen. Are they actually unknown? And the fact is that, what is the rationale? I want people to let us sit down and assess it. The rationale behind me, I'm angry with the federal government in Abuja, or federal government of Nigeria, 
and I'm killing my kinsmen. You have seen cases where the same people from the same family, kinsmen, brothers and sisters from the same compound, killing one another. I get your point very quick. Uh, so I very don't clearly. know. We have to go now. We just yes. I don't know yeah. why we are going to just oppose. We are going to just oppose that and mm. define whether we actually have any security in that side. Or we have embraced you, foreign ideologies yeah. that, that, that are inimical to our coexistence as a nation, as a family in Nigeria. Right. This must be holistically addressed. It goes beyond the issue of why first we are discussing on the platform here. Indeed. And I'm sure our leaders, our leaders know what I'm saying for those who are familiar with this problem in the Southeast. Perhaps we have to I know. Get, um, get you two hours the next time you come, because it's hard to even uh, butt in where you're talking. But if you can, in one minute, because we have to go now, let's talk about the police projection, particularly in the area of manpower in the new year. The IGP was quoted to have said that the officers, that is officers now do the work, that an officer does the work of two persons. Is there a clear-cut plan for that in the new year? Yes, there are two things to that. We are trying to work on more recruitment of good brains and good hands into Nigeria police force. Mark my words, that era has gone that will recruit those that will force on us to come and police Nigeria for us. No, policing is a very serious business. Security business is a very serious matter that we don't want to just have those that will be giving up problems. We want to have good brains and good hands. Now, the, press, the federal government, under the leadership of... Um, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubuji Sefar has increased the number of recruitment intakes to the Nigerian police force. Initially, it was 10,000, but now we are going to be recruiting 30,000 uh, recruits into the Nigerian police force. And now we are having a joint uh, recruitment board head headed by the Police Service Commission under the chairmanship of Dr. Solomon Arase, the former Inspector General of Police. So we have a joint board now compresses many agencies, including Federal Character Commission, to see how we're going to have good recruitment process. And then, on the other hand, is the issue of the use of ICT. You agree with me that globally now, you can't police anywhere without the use of technology. And that is why the President Federal Government is key to this. The IGP has submitted certain proposals to make sure we acquire some of these state-of-the-art equipment to help us. That's the equipment to help us. Okay. We are working with all ministry department agencies to see how we're going to improve on this. We have upgraded our platforms, intelligence platform. We are having more forensic laboratories in Nigeria. Right. We're having more of our vehicles to be well stationed, well equipped with cameras, even our choppers. The federal government is working on how to get more choppers for police right. to patrol mm -hmm. and give area support to our grand troops. So with all these ideas, all these methods, all these projections into having our own modern policing, our own people-friendly policing structure in Nigeria. I think these uh, new ideas and innovations from the IGP. We're counting. We're counting on them, and us. we're looking forward to you know better performance in the new year. Force Public Relations Officer OACP Olumu Yuade Jobi, thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you, Nivemi. Thank you, Nigerians. We wish you. Uh, a very blissful festive period for Christmas and the forthcoming New Year. God bless Nigeria. God bless all of us. Thank you.